Hi, this is Tim of the Watchbox at Dubai Watch Week 2021, and we are here at Chronometry Fernand Bertou. This is the second all new watch from the brand since it was refounded in 2015. Appropriately enough, it takes after the FB1 as it is a GPHG award winner taking the chronometry prize. Now this timepiece is absolutely singular. It's large, it's rare, it's expensive, and unlike a lot of hyped timepieces, it is worth all of the hype. So 44 millimeters in white gold. The first thing I want to call out is the immaculate Grand Faux enamel dial. You can see that it has that lovely uh, rough pattern, but not too rough. There's a little bit of an orange peel ridging that marks this as enamel and not a lacquer. You can also see that the hands are beautifully blued and polished. There's a deadbeat complication that works off the Remontoire de Galité, and you can also see that the watch does include a traditional uh, stop seconds mechanism, so you can set it quite precisely, appropriately for a certified chronometer. Now, it's a big watch, but it's a wearable watch, and it continues the FB1 series, the use of viewports and profile, because as with the original, it features a few and chain constant force device. Now, the architecture in the upper half of the movement is very similar if you know the FB1. It gets a little bit different when you start moving towards the bottom. Now the watch is still manual wind, 50 hour power reserve. You have the constant force mechanism based on the fusée and chain. The fusée is a hyperboloid, which is sort of like a curved tapered cone. And as the mainspring barrel energy winds down and the force is reduced, the fusée allows the mainspring to pull an effective larger ratio, just like bicycle gears. As you run out of energy, you use an easier gear, you maintain your mechanical advantage, thereby ensuring constant force to the escapement. But there's a second refinement here. Unlike the original, which was the fusée and then a tourbillon, here we have a remontoire de galette, which is effectively acting as the indexing mechanism for the deadbeat second. So you have not one, but two constant force devices working in tandem. Now it's a beautifully made movement and there really is no compromise. This is where my camera falls short. I'll try to get as close as I can, but perhaps the best sign of the attention to detail here is at the edge of the platform bearing the escapement and then the anchor for the remontoire system. So you can see that it's a little bit of a, it's like a curved rouleau triangle, but the edges of the triangle, the very ends, are actually blunted and beveled. And you can see that on both sides. These aren't perfectly tipped triangular forms. They're actually blunted with two points at their end. And each of those is completely beveled. This is a level of attention to detail you do not find on conventional watches, even those bearing the Geneva hallmark. Now, if you get a little bit closer, you can see that the mirrored beveling on the bridges is also both wide and mirrored. It's the real thing. This is not done with a machine. If you take a look at the base plate, you can see it's wonderfully chiseled. It has a hammered-like texture, probably achieved using a wire brush or a motorized tip. This is very difficult to do to create this rusticated matte finish on the metal. Now, if you go back up to the fusée and chain, you can see that there is a planetary gear set that allows the watch to be wound without affecting the amount of torque that is transmitted uh, downstream to the remontoire mechanism. So again, two levels of constant force device. There is a stop works and you can see the way this works. The chain winds from the barrel to the fusée, and then in the opposite direction as it discharges. And what ultimately happens is that the watch uh, will, and I'm gonna show you how this works, the watch will allow the chain to climb the fusée to increase the mechanical advantage, and all of this is hand finished. The stop works prevents the watch from running inaccurately. So the thing is, although the watch could in theory run longer than 50 hours, what happens is that it will stop itself rather than run imprecisely, and that's the idea behind a stop works. That's exactly what this watch does. It's three hands, $250,000 roughly speaking, entirely dedicated to chronometry and precision, which is why it's a GPHG laureate. This is Tim Masso with Dubai Watch Week 2021.